All right, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the webinar for uh, today. And glad to have everybody here today uh, as we talk about the markets. Before I get into the strategies, just uh, real briefly on uh, today, we're going to give a, a little bit uh, of an intro to the next online class we'll be doing. It'll be starting a week from uh, yesterday. So it'll start next Tuesday, April 27th. It'll go Tuesday and Thursday for three weeks. Uh, we'll be meeting at a one central for about an hour, both days for the next three weeks, starting next Tuesday. All classes will be recorded and archived uh, if you're working or can't make a session and you can watch it when you get a chance that evening or another day. And the nice thing about the way we do classes is there you, you'll get your own class page where you'll have all the PowerPoint slides and everything and you can watch it months and months and months after the class. But the nice thing is there's a button there on the page that says ask Dan a question or if it's Mark or whatever, but and you can ask questions as you're going through it. And when we get a chance, we will answer them. So that's the next class is, is all our three-week classes for years and years have been the same, uh, $297. And you'll be able to go on, I think it, uh, you can go on now, uh, online at Shared and Mentoring and sign up. But uh, now let's talk about the class and then we'll get into strategies. Um, we're going to talk about, I've been thinking what would be helpful for the next class. And, um, and really what came to mind is, what are a couple strategies that come to mind when I think about some of these words? Conservative, slower moving trades, something that doesn't go against you so quick, right? So something that if you put on in the market makes a move, gives you a little more price protection, uh, slower moving. And, and so that's what I want to talk about. We're going to spend three weeks, Mark Fenton and myself, and, uh, and, and probably Jay Bailey will come on and do a class, but it'll be around this theme, a couple slower moving trades. How many wish when they put a, how many would like a trade when they put it on and the market moves, it can handle a decent price move, right? Gives you more room, more price protection, but still gives you the positive theta. I think most of us would like that versus sometimes you put on a two week calendar and the price move goes against you and you get, you get beat up a bit. So here's a couple strategies. I'll just kind of introduce them today. And let's start with a comparison Here's a calendar. Is there anybody who is not familiar with a calendar trade? Is there anybody in the uh, that's watching this uh, webinar that is not familiar with what a calendar uh, trade is? So a calendar trade is simply a range-bound uh, trade strategy someone would put on for weekly uh, or monthly income. And in this example, what I'm doing is uh, with a calendar, you're always buying an expiration further out. So here we're buying the May 12s and we're selling a closer in expiration, the May 5. So Criteria one for a calendar, you're buying the further out expiration, selling the closer in. Uh, if it's a non-directional calendar, mean we're not really bullish or bearish, more range bound, you put it at close to at the money. So we're at 41.63 in SPX. So I would just put it at, put them both at the same strike at 41.60. And in this particular pl uh, strategy, uh, the calendar, it's going for around 
ten dollars and twenty cents, right? Debit. That means it's a little over a thousand dollars to do one. This is your graph at expiration, and that's the expiration of the short, which is May five, and May five is going to be about. Uh, May 5 is going to be about 14 days from, um, from expiration. Uh, and your long is going to be, in this particular example, seven days further out uh, than your short. And when you look at this trade, this is where the underline is, 41.63. So at expiration, and you can see this is the PL. Do you make your most around the strike price at expiration? So this will be in uh, in two weeks, right? Uh, in two weeks, where do you want the stock to be? If you look at the graph in 14 days. Where do you want the stock to be? This is the strike price. Ideally, at expiration in 14 days, where would you like it to be based on the graph? So look at the graph. Where would you like it to be at expiration? At the strike, 41.60. And you make on a $1,000 investment, the debit, well, you can almost make double that. How is that possible? It's possible because if, if you put a couple prices in here, we won't spend a lot of time on this because this isn't a discussion on uh, calendars. Um, but what happens is at least and how they work, if you look at the May 5, uh, the May 5 4160s that we sell, right now they're trading at around uh, $44. So, So if these are $44 and these are gonna be at $54.20. Well, if we close right at 41.60 at expiration, right? So at expiration, if the May 5s at May 5 expiration close at 41.60, what will these be trading at? What will those be trading at, at expiration? Zero. Is that good? Is that good or bad? Is that good or bad? It's good. So what you sold at 44 goes to zero. Now you're long, you paid 54.20, right? So at May 5 expiration, right? On May 5th, how many days left will the May 12 have? On May 5th, when this expires, when this graph comes to fruition, how many days left will you have on the May 12s? You'll have seven. So if we look right now at what a seven-day option at the money is trading for, that would give us a, a good indication that would give us a good indication of, of where our long will be at when the short expires in seven days from now. So if we look a seven-day option, April 28th, if we look at an at-the-money option, which would be 41.65. Uh, let me go here quickly. So if we look at the 4165s, uh, if we look at the at the monies, and with seven days to go, let me go back up here. 
the at the monies are going to be trading at about, excuse me, they're going to be trading at around $27. So, so these will go to about $27, right? You with me? Your shorts will go to zero. They're going to decay more than your longs. But your longs with seven days to go will still hold $27. So this spread that you paid $10.20 for, right, would go to $27. So how much would you make? How much would you make? How much would you make if you paid $10.20 debit and you sold it out for 27? What's 27 minus 10? About $17, right? So if you look at the P&L here, right? If you hit a bullseye, it closed at the short strike in 14 days you'd make about 1700 right? Does that make sense? A little bit, you'll have to, but that's at least how they work right now. If you look at this trade, now let's get into how are, we're gonna talk about kind of a new concept with calendars, something that we haven't taught for a while. If you look at this, when you put a calendar on, if you just look at the graph, this is your profitable area. And so we use this term we call expiration break even, where the expiration line crosses zero at expiration. That's kind of how much room you have, right? And when it goes outside of this area, that's bad, you lose money, right? So this is your profitable area between the expiration break-evens. And so if I look at this, this calendar trade is 4160. This is a 14-day calendar. And I look at my expiration break-evens. Question is, how much room do I have, right? On the downside, it says like 4108, right? On the upside, 42.15, right? So maybe, does everybody see that? So I've got about this distance, I've got 55 points on the upside and 55 on the downside. Are you with me so far? 55 points. What I'm gonna be introducing and talking about in the class is Instead of doing a two week calendar to give us more, to create a trade that gives you much more protection, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go and do this type of calendar. So my long or my short, right? My short is gonna be about 30 days out to expiration. My long is going to be almost 60 days out, right? So not only am I not doing my previous example was a 14 day calendar here, I'm going 30 days out on my short. But my long, there's going to be 30 days difference between my long and my short, right? So if you look at that, and now we look at the profitable area, does it look wider to you? I'm doing the same strike. Does that look wider, the profit area? Yes or no? Does the profit area look wider? Well, let's compare. The previous 14-day calendar, the break-evens, We're about 55 points. On a 30 day calendar, that's where my shorts are 30 days out. Now you look at these numbers, 
right? And you're getting about 90 points either way, right? 90. Is that quite a bit more? So, so you get much more room. Um, Petru said SPX calendars used to work very well for me when SPX was at 2,500 levels. Now at 4,000 plus levels, not very good because the break evens are much narrower when SPX is at lower levels. Well, it is true that the lower the volatility, the the lower the volatility, the narrower your break evens, the higher the volatility, the wider the break evens. But from a volatility point of view, if you're putting calendars on at a high volatility and the volatilities come down, you could really get hurt. From a volatility point of view, you like them at these levels, right? From a volatility, you like them at these levels. And ultimately, calendars working or not working are really going to be how you manage the trade, right? Um, uh, calendars, they've been fine in our community the last month or so. You know, with the market going up and stuff, the way we manage them, um, they've been fine. So it's really how you manage them ultimately. Um, now, the 14-day calendar was $10.00. And the 30-day 30, uh, 30 calendar is $30. So, you know, whether you do, you know, it's, it's all relative. If you have $3,000 to trade, you can do three of these or one of these, right? But the point is you're getting substantially more room there, um, substantially more room there, which helps. Because most people, they like shorter term calendars, but the truth is they have a much more difficult time uh, managing them. Um, Bill says, could you not just do a double or triple calendar with much less time to expire and get almost the same distance on your break even points you could, but you, you still have more price risk and you're going to put up a lot of capital. Um, you know, again, there's different things you can do, but when you go closer to expiration, you have much more price risk. So th this is a trade, you know, let's face it. Let's face it. How many of you would be happy if you said, Dan, I'm just trying to get one trade that I can get decent at, Right. And, and, and make some money and get consistent. How many are you just searching for one trade that you can do consistently and, and, and turn it into a profit center? That's it. And so I think for most people, right? For most people, starting them or even at any point, keeping them going with something that gives them more room right? It's going to keep them at it, right? Um, if you have something that you run into problems so quickly, you're going to get discouraged. So I think this is a very conservative trade. It's not saying I don't do or wouldn't advise doing shorter term stuff, but I think this would be something that on $3,000 type trade, conservative gives you a lot of room, right? Um, and when I say gives you a lot of room, you can just see if this is the graph, if you look at the, t this is your graph at expiration, but if you look at the T plus zero curve, the curve today, you know, it's, it's well-rounded. It's not real steep like this, right? Which is what you get when you get trades closer to expiration. Well, yes is Jerry says, you want to trade the environment successfully regardless of the type of, uh, of trade. Yes, but, but it is important um, uh, in the environment, whether you go closer to expiration, right? Or go further, um, 
when you do go further, it's going to give you more room, right? If there's a price move. And, uh, and so John says, Dan, what is the theta on the 30 day? I cannot see it on the screen. The theta is 24, 24. So that is one trade uh, th that we'll be teaching with full risk management and, and I'll probably teach two methodologies, how to do it if you want it totally automated, no adjustments, just put it on, put in your, uh, your risk management and that's it. You don't really have to watch it. And then for others that are a little more experienced, I'll talk a little bit about adjustments and how to do it. And each class will put on another live trade. So you'll get at least six trades of experience in the double diagonal, six trades of experience in the calendar. And again, this, is, this isn't this is eliminating shorter term calendars, but it's also, it's, it's putting some capital to work that is easier to manage. Um, all right, so that is the calendar. And then the double diagonal is just basically going to be similar to an iron condor in graph. Um, but it's something that is we're in these lower volatility environments uh, is more favorable uh, trade than an iron condor. And so it starts the foundation is the same as an iron condor. You know, in this case, you're selling the uh, May 12, 4220 call. And on the downside, you're selling the May 12, 4090 put. So why is this the same foundation as an iron condor? You're selling in with the underlying at 41.62, you're selling an out of the money call and an out of the money put. What's the foundation of an iron condor? Sell an out of the money call and out of the money put. What's the foundation of a double diagonal? Sell an out of the money call, out of the money put. In this case, we're 21 days out on our shorts. But against that, an iron condor you'll buy your hedges in the same expiration, right? With an iron condor, you might buy your hedges, you know, May 12, you might buy the 40, 80 puts. So you have two credit spreads. And on the upside, you might buy the May 12, 4230s. That would be an iron condor. But when the volatilities are low, I don't want to buy my longs in the same expiration. I want to buy my longs in an expiration further out. So in this case, this double diagonal, you could go further out. In this particular example, I bought the May 17s, 40, 70 puts further out of the money. And on the upside, I bought the May 17s, 40, 35 calls. Uh, let me just see if I get this right. Excuse me, 42, 35 calls. Now, some people get a little, how many of you, your stomach hurts when you think of doing a four-legged beast? How many of you, your stomach, your stomach hurts when you think of four-legged beasts, right? There's four options here. How many of you does that bother? You think it's too complicated when you have a, a strategy with four legs? Anybody? Um, I wouldn't rather like, I would rather do this as one trade, but, um, what we'll go over in the class is again, 
fully automate it with no adjustments. Just put it on, take it off. So you can make this as simple as you want. For others, as you get more experience, we'll give a little more uh, thorough risk management. Um, but it's funny when you say expensive, our target goals are generally eight to 10% over a week or nine days, right? So when you look at a double diagonal, in this case, it's around $2,000. That's where the risk is on the downside. You know, we're looking at eight to 10%. I'm not sure what you mean by expensive, but it's not, um, you know, that's quite a return um, that we're shooting for. But anyways, that's a brief, just a brief, brief, what the heck we're going to talk about over the next three weeks. And, you know, if you're, if you're interested in some of these conservative strategies that have very hands-off risk management, something you can do, you don't have to be an option wizard uh, to do this. Um, I think this will be helpful. As I said, every class I'll put on a live trade on each so that you can get the practical behind it. And, and we'll walk you through. So this will be a very craftsman-like class. Again, trying to get you something that you would be comfortable with um, as you learn these things. Yeah, Petru's talking about earnings calendars, and that's a totally different subject. Um, yeah, that, that's more of a crapshoot. Doing calendars at earnings uh, can be a crapshoot, um, but this, yeah, this isn't, we're not playing at earnings, it's a different game. Um, the time decay on this, can you guys see this is uh, like $25 a day. Yeah, I won't, I don't have enough time today to get into all the adjustments and all that. That's how we will um, we'll be going over that in the class starting Tuesday, but I just wanted to kind of introduce this, uh, what we would be going over, why we would be going over, what we're going over, and uh, some conservative strategies that won't take much of your time as far as managing them, and that give you some good, because we're going out a little bit duration. Um, it's giving you uh, some time here. Um, and, uh, and we'll go give a complete risk management, how long we would stay in the trade, how, when we would take it off, well, how do we put an order in to get out of it? So I think it would be helpful. Um, would this work for NDX? I don't like the liquidity in NDX. Uh, not that it wouldn't work in NDX, but I just think the, it's easier to get filled at decent prices in SPX than it is in NDX. Um, and um, so we'll cover all the details uh, starting Tuesday at 1 central. So if you have any other questions, uh, you can send me an email, dan at sheridanmentoring.com. I may look at RUT would be the only other vehicle other than SPX that I probably would cover. And uh, so anyways, well, thanks everybody, appreciate you stopping by. Uh, if you have any other questions on the course, you can email me, dan, at sheridanmentoring.com. If not, we will see you this Tuesday. Thanks again.